I'm Phoebe Collins-James and I'm an artist and ceramicist currently finishing my residency at Camden Art Centre. Yeah, so the show that has come about from these works is called A Scratch, A Scratch with two big exclamation marks. And the title is from Act 3, Scene 1 of Romeo and Juliet, specifically thinking about Baz Luhrmann's film. That exclamation was interesting to me, thinking about it as this sarcastic exclamation of something not hurting when actually it's fatal. Quick. <laughs> Specifically through Harold Pirino's portrayal of Mercutio, who is like so exuberant, so sexy, so queer and camp and all these things. But then also he's the one who dies first, you know, and even more so in Baz Luhrmann's film, he's, he's a black man and he dies first. Hurt. Aye, aye, a scratch, a scratch. A scratch! I think that a phrase that kept going through my head was this idea of like tenderizing and the tender, and the idea of like tenderizing being this real, like literal, like worms meat, completely mashing up the body, and then the tender, which is this soft body, soft flesh. These two things we kind of often experience simultaneously. So as you walk into the gallery, I think one of the first things you see are eight armours made of ceramic. A lot of the things I was thinking about when making those works was this kind of idea of protection and tenderness, where a sort of like almost calcifying level of shielding occurs in terms of like an emotional experience of the body and of heartbreak and grief and love and um, maybe even like beauty and desire. Each of the plates are kind of quite different to one another. They all have different adornments. Some are like imprinted with different plants from the garden. Some of them have rope and braiding adorning the edges. And all of them in some ways have a kind of rupture in them. Some of them are rupturing from the nipples or breasts, um, from the stomachs, from the edges. There's a feeling that they are becoming themselves and becoming undone all at once. So, this kind of like cyclical idea comes in with the sound work, which is called Joy Comes With The Morning. It features 12 poems, which were all created during a tarot circle with the artist Daniela Valsgen. We would focus on one card um, in the major arcana and they would lead poetry and writing and like dialogue around the sort of like ideas of divination and archetype and symbolism related to each card. So in some form or another, 12 of these poems feature in the sound work that was created with the artist Moen. The poems kind of weave in and out. There are 12 of them from the 12 months span, which almost aligns with the time of the residency. It starts just before. Shorter cycles of the day to night are also featured there and are revealed in the title as well. So this idea of like joy coming with the morning, like tomorrow's another day, all of these proverbs or sayings that give hope that after a night of terrors or a period of grief that there will be a moment of renewal. Tower will not let decadence sleep. First breath, fire body, earth blown. Decadence is relieved. Talk until it hurts, hoarse and tangled. Sentences merge. Evoking fire, fire breath, ricochet. Bullet 
in the brain. The brain. The brain. There are sort of three ceramic bells that hold the speakers in, and under them sits a bowl of water. Both of the works have been thrown on the wheel, which is kind of a different technique to the other elements in the show, which are all slab-based, hand-built hand works. So the sculptures that hold the sound are thrown, and that feeling of movement continues from the wheel, then a long sailing rope which binds the three bowls together and then trails throughout the space. In the sound, there is a lot of voices. There's a lot of my voice, but then there's also trumpet and trombone and sax players, which are also jugular, chesty, mouthy instruments. The way we kind of articulate our desires and the way we experience grief and heartbreak and love are all through these same organs, right? And I guess what I've been thinking about personally is like, how do you recognize a sense of wholeness? How do you keep yourself open to being loved and being loving when you're also experiencing grief or loss? Because those things do happen to us all at once. 